my name is Patrick and this video should tell you about mock taking strategy for MBA CET. So CET is a little different exam, two and a half hours, 200 questions. So it is important to plan the paper well and have a proper strategy in place. But a good strategy could vary from individual to individual. I mean, some strategy may work for one person, some strategy may work for other persons. What we'll be doing out here is we'll pick up a few strategies and just inform you about the same. What are the strategies that you can follow? You can experiment, modify, change as per what you want, and then decide. Okay. So broadly speaking, I'll look at the strategy into two ways. One is a two-round strategy, three-round strategy, which I'll talk about it. And second is uh, time and questions. So 30 minutes, 40 questions, so 30 minutes, 50 questions, and so on. Let's look at both these strategies and see what are the pros and cons of benefits or negatives of each strategy. So first time for the two round strategy, three round strategy, and normally recommend make a chart of accuracy versus time. I mean, high accurate, okay, and uh, let's say less time. And same way, low accuracy, more time. So you would prefer questions which have high on uh, accuracy and less time. So if you can take questions which takes lesser time and more accuracy, you prefer those questions. There could be some logic questions where you could solve things faster and you could really be accurate. Possible. Okay. Oh, so automatically you will put them in the first bracket. Okay. So you'll first solve questions with high accuracy, low time. See how many questions are there, number of questions. Okay. Let's say X or let's say A questions. Okay. Then you look at low accuracy, low time. So less time, but low accuracy. Okay, and the next preference question. So you would always prefer questions which takes lesser time. So you can take more time, more questions in the examination. So I would rather solve maybe something on fill in the blanks, analogies, uh, synonyms, antonyms, which takes lesser time to solve than maybe max question, which takes more time to solve because purely because I can solve more number of questions. So that's the next, okay, which takes less time, do low accuracy. Third will be my accuracy is high, but I take a lot of time. Is it third? So first, second, and third will be somewhere where my high accuracy, I'm good at it. I can solve a lot of questions, but I take a lot of time. So it's avoidable because the moment you take a lot of time on a question, automatically you can less or less number of total questions and that becomes a problem. And last is low accuracy, high time. Any questions where you take maybe less accuracy and high time. So for me, maybe, uh, I could be a little fast with regards to maybe uh, a few type of logic questions which I can solve really fast and have high accuracy. I could be low accuracy, less time would be something like verbal question for me. Uh, some of the verbal questions like fill in the blanks I can solve really fast, but my accuracy also is low. There should be high accuracy and I mean um, low time basically. Next will be high accuracy and uh, higher time. I take more time and more accuracy in this. Maybe some difficult max questions or difficult logic questions. I may take more time, but my accuracy is high. And the last will be questions with low accuracy but high time. Like RC reading comprehension could be thing for me. Now, for each of these type of questions, I will then try to find marks per minute. So try to prefer solving questions with you know high marks per minute where I can get more marks per minute. So find out the marks that you get, divide by the time that you take, that will give you marks per minute. Whether you get high marks per minute, those are the questions you'll solve first. Wherever you get low marks per minute, those are the questions you leave or solve in the end. When I say leave, you'll guess mark it. Right? So this is a broad framework. So now two round strategy, I'm breaking up at two hours, two rounds into first round as two hours. This is first round. And second round is 20 minutes. Now you can break it up the way you want. Maybe you want to solve first round in one and a half hours, second round in one hour. Depends on you, whatever you're comfortable with. I'm just breaking up in two hours. So in two hours, identify the number of questions that you can solve. So, okay, let me say I can solve, let's say, uh, 100 questions in first two hours. So, which means I have 60 questions which are high accuracy, low time, and I have 40 questions which are low accuracy, low time. So, I'll focus on these 100 questions and solve in the first round. Okay. In the next round, last 20 minutes, maybe I can solve like 15 questions. Okay. Or 10 questions. So, maybe I look at well, the questions with high accuracy and high time, the next 10 questions from here. And lastly, uh, guess mark, remaining question, maybe I'll guess mark in the last 10 minutes. I'm just taking a rough strategy. The strategy would be go to the entire paper in two hours, identify questions, I mean, solve the question which you find you can solve in the first round, that first 100 questions or whatever questions are planned. 
So I planned maybe I'll solve maths in the first round. I will solve easy logic questions in the first round and so on. Maybe in the second round, I'll solve maybe a tough logic questions. And last 10 minutes, I'll guess mark the remaining questions. So accordingly, go as per your plan. When you're going to the first round, also write down the question numbers when the, what will come in the last 20 minutes, the second round. So you don't have to keep searching for the questions. Maybe in a paper, you can write in the side the question number that will solve in the second round. And you can come and solve those in the second round. And last 10 minutes, guess what? So two round strategy. I believe it's a good strategy. This is a strategy I normally I follow. It helps. It basically tells you to solve all the questions that are easy first. I mean, it finishes off the easy questions. And then maybe you can come and solve the difficult question later. That's how it goes. Uh, three round strategy is similar. Only thing that I'm breaking on three levels. So the first one hour, I'll solve all the easy me or easy sums. Okay. Uh, and others I'll mark as easy, medium, tough. All the very easy sums which are there, which are sitters, which I can solve really fast. The first 60 questions from which takes um, high accuracy, low time, I'll solve in the first one hour. But I'll go to the entire paper and mark the remaining questions as easy, medium, tough. I mean, write in the paper which are questions are easy, medium, tough, question numbers. Next one hour, I'll solve the easy or medium number questions, whichever are possible. And last, whatever. Medium level questions are there, I'll solve in 20 minutes. So I'm breaking up into 1 hour, 1 hour, 20 minutes. So first round, going to the entire paper, solving very easy questions, marking the remaining questions as easy, medium, tough. Second round, solving the easier medium questions from the remaining questions that are marked. And last, coming back to the medium questions. And last 10 minutes for this one. So this is a three round strategy. Same thing, but I'm putting in three rounds. Now you need to identify which question will solve in the first round, which question will solve in the second round, etc. Based on experimentation. You have to experiment, find out what works, what doesn't work for you. Then we come to 30, 40 strategy. And every 30 minutes, so look at 40 questions and solve whatever questions possible in those 40 questions. So first 30 questions, go, your target should be to reach the 48 questions. So in first half an hour, solve as many questions, leave the tough questions and reach the 48 question half an hour. So keep doing it. Uh, so that means in very fun 50 minutes, right? You'll be able to go to all 200 questions. What is the problem in this particular strategy? The problem is if in the last set of 40 questions, most of the questions are easy, and you don't have enough time to solve them, just because maybe you've taken more time in the initial sections, or it takes more time to solve the questions, and you lose out on the marks. So you don't have a buffer time in the end because normally what happens in the CD exam? In the exam time, you don't realize. You certainly take a little bit more time, 10 minutes more for a solving puzzle, and you're not even realize that your time taken is at the expense of some other questions. So, which can you know have a problem in the strategy? Therefore, I normally say keep a buffer in the end that could help. So, the problem only with this section is that there is no buffer in the end. So, which means if you are not following the strategy exactly, there could be a problem, and that is always a problem in the actual exam. It's always preferable to have buffer. Because of which you saw either of the strategy, 30, 50 strategy or 20, 40 strategy. Similar, in the first 30 minutes, solve 50 questions. So, which means in two hours, you can solve all the 200 questions. Look through all the 200 questions and solve the easy ones. So, next strategy, 25 minutes, um, you look at 40 questions. So, you attempt whatever possible question that you can. And the end, you will have 25 minutes before because in by the time you finish, uh, you know, 125 minutes, you can finish all 200 questions. And then you'll have 25 minutes buffer in the end. So strategy is similar, all the three strategy. Only thing in these two strategy, you get a buffer time. Also, how much time and how many questions you want to solve, you can break it up based on your comfort level and then go ahead with it. But the idea of this again is in this 30 minutes, 50 questions, you will reach the 58 question. That means you'll leave all the tough questions in between, try to solve all the easy questions that are possible in between, and try to set, get as much marks as possible. That's the basic idea of this particular strategy. So 30 minutes, 50 questions and 25 minutes, 40 questions, whichever you're comfortable. The key to form a good strategy is obviously experiment with yourself. Experiment, see which strategy works, which strategy doesn't work for you. Every person is different. So try out a different strategy and modify it. I mean, you need not be followed blindly the 30-50 strategy or 30-40 strategy. You need to modify it based on your experience in every mock. Every mock will have a different experience. Modify the strategy based on what you feel you're comfortable, what you're not, and then decide which to go. But you want to go from start to end, but you want to go from end to start, or any way you want. There are many ways where you can vary the paper the way you solve. And that becomes very important. I'll come up with a video as to how I decided my strategy when I got into Bajaj and stood, stood third rank all India. So that time maybe I'll tell you as to 
how do you modify the strategy to you know build your confidence hope this helps all the best for the exam and do experiment